And, you know, a little bit of more Marjorie Taylor Greene and a few more, you're going to have a lot of Republicans running our way. <laughs> Isn't she amazing? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Ours is the reason she was, she was very specific. I shouldn't digress probably, but she was, I've read. She, she was very specific recently saying that a mom, a poor mother who lost two kids to fentanyl, that, that I killed her sons. Well, the interesting thing is, that fentanyl they took came during the last administration. <laughs> Apparently, Dark Brandon is back because, as you just saw, he decided to poke fun at Marjorie Taylor Greene for just being generally unhinged 99.9% .9 of the time. And I think that he's expressing how all of us feel about her, particularly with this reaction. Oof. Yeah. So even though I disagree with Joe Biden on many issues and think that he's far too conservative for the Democratic Party, as conservative as they are, generally speaking, it really is moments like that that make it obvious why he's more endearing to normies than other Democratic Party politicians who are just overly rehearsed and phony. Sometimes just having a human reaction to something and saying aloud what we're all thinking is actually good, believe it or not. But having said that though, there is something in there that I wanted to address. And it's this idea that if the Republican Party produced more Marjorie Taylor Greens, then more moderate Republican Party voters would flee and move to the Democratic Party. I don't actually think that that's true. While her insanity may scare off some centrists, I think that this unhinged behavior helps shore up the GOP's core base. They like it. They support Donald Trump. They loved Sarah Palin. The kookiest figures in the GOP have had the most staying power over the years. And this is important because you can't project your sanity onto a base of voters that agree with Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene. The Democratic Party needs to acknowledge that there's a large portion of the Republican Party's base that just isn't gettable, and they should adjust their policy positions in recognition of that reality. And rather than trying to appeal to centrist Republicans and peel them off one by one, they need to put more effort into shoring up their own base, namely young people and leftists, who feel abandoned by the party's incrementalist neoliberal policies, unapologetically supporting policies like Medicare for All nationwide legalization of marijuana, free college for everyone. That is the democratic equivalent of throwing red meat to their base. And as much as I hate the Republican Party and think that they're a bunch of barbaric monsters, you can't deny that they are undoubtedly good at throwing red meat to their base. They do it all the time. And this idea that far-right politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene will turn off Republican voters, I think it's just wishful thinking, honestly. Most Republican voters like politicians like Marjorie Greene. No matter how extreme and hypocritical they are, the base still hasn't abandoned them. For example, the GOP has spent the last, what, five years denouncing political correctness and safe spaces, and Marjorie Taylor Greene today, I believe, admitted that she herself wants a safe space of her own. She actually said this, albeit sarcastically, but she still said this nonetheless. And it's just overt hypocrisy. Listen. I understand, Congresswoman, is why don't they want to divorce us? As you pointed out, sad as it may be, they hate us. Okay, the feeling is mutual, at least on my end. I'm not telling everybody to feel that way. I hate you, you hate me. Why are we living together? Why are we still married? Why don't we, why don't we go our separate ways? Well, you know, certainly we've been trying to kick them out of the bedroom and make them sleep on the sofa for some time now, Jesse, but they just don't seem to get the message. Uh, those same people that are criticizing me for saying, hey, I need my own safe space from all of you people are the same people that are shoving their policies and they're discussing woke ideologies down our throats. So safe spaces are apparently good now. I mean, imagine if the Democratic Party did a 180 on something and said, we want to cut Social Security or we're against trans rights. Most members of the base would see that and say, that's not acceptable. I don't like this. It's not a one to one comparison, but you understand that generally speaking, I think that sane and rational people see 180 degree turns like that, flip flops like that. And they think, wow, I don't like this. 
But I mean, the Republican Party does this all the time. So no amount of hypocrisy or lack of consistency will turn off the GOP's base. And I say that because if it were possible for that to happen, it would have already happened. And understand how Marjorie Taylor Greene is ironically claiming that the left, they're shoving their woke ideologies down our throats while not acknowledging that she is a self-proclaimed Christian nationalist. I mean, the core goal of Christian nationalism is to impose their will on everyone in the country because they have divine authority from God to subject us to his laws. So, I mean, if the GOP's base could get turned off by kooky Republican politicians, it would have happened a long time ago. So the main takeaway from this video is that Democrats shouldn't focus on courting disillusioned Republicans. I know that Biden was only half serious in that video, but really they need to instead focus on shoring up their own base of support, primarily with young people and leftists and double down on popular policies that will help working class people and go even further. And Republicans would call them crazy socialists, sure. But they're already doing that, even though Biden is demonstrably not a socialist. He's proven time and time again that he is a staunch capitalist. Most of the Democratic Party, they believe in the free market. They are neoliberals. So you should just do what your base wants and not think about the ways in which Republicans are going to criticize you because Republicans certainly never think about the ways in which they're going to come off to the Democratic Party's base. So the conclusion is we should continue to make fun of batshit insane Republicans, yes, but also learn from them strategically. Throw red meat to your base, Democrats, be assertive, set the agenda, monopolize discourse, extract the crazy out of their strategy and weaponize it against them. So that's all I have to say about this. If you agree with me, hit that like button and let me know your thoughts down below. And be sure to subscribe if you want more content like this and help us reach our next milestone of 400,000 subscribers. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.